It is Brainiac's day, and it's also a very special occasion. The one-year anniversary of the landing of NASA's Curiosity rover on the surface of Mars. Yeah. Okay, NASA technically says it's August 5th, but what do they know? Here's a look back at the live stream from the early morning hours of August 6th, 2012. Touchdown confirmed. We're safe yeah. on Mars. What an incredible moment. I'm so excited to have NASA JPL's Bobak Ferdosi, who became an international celebrity that night. Thank you for being here, Bobak. Yeah. Plus, we have an all-star and extremely curious panel joining us from Nerdist, Matt Mara, oh, yeah. from SourceFed Meg Turney, and from Vsauce 2, Kevin Lieber. Yeah. How's everyone doing today? I saw yeah, you were really getting like the chills. You were like a little boy watching that. I, yeah, I would get a little giddy inside still watching that. It's kind of it's kind of Still, awesome. it doesn't get old. No, it does not get old. We couldn't contact NASA and get a non-pixelated version of that video. <laughs> <laughs> no one could pick up we're the phone. We're not that advanced. <laughs> Matt, we are not. Are you just saving bandwidth talking to Mars? <laughs> or you're like, here, just send this out. It's fine. Do you guys remember what you were doing that night? Were you watching the live stream? Because it felt like it brought everyone together. That was my yes. birthday. I was drunk out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Yes. <laughs> oh, what? wait. How what? do you drive the... <laughs> hmm. I was yeah, a yeah. good American. I was watching the live stream. Oh, Absolutely. Good. Tweeting with America, yeah? Yeah. I mean, I think the, the whole world was watching. It wasn't just the Americans. Okay. I'm Canadian. Hey, I was watching. Come on, girl. Get You're on the Canadian? Bus. Why do I immediately like you 30% more? Aww, Canada's the that best. That just brought us together. I just, I just, well, okay, I'll, I will give that to you. It was probably the whole world. How's Canada's <laughs> Mars rover doing? <laughs> oh. Thank you. Moving oh. on. Oh. Hey, you okay, guys good. have that We're arm on the space shuttle. Oh. <laughs> what is the coolest thing that you feel? I mean, you're obviously there. This is your baby. How many years have you worked on this? For I've worked years? on this for a little over nine years That's now. That's incredible. Yeah. And it's one of those things like you hope it works out, right? Or else that was that it, would that be a waste of nine years? I, I hopefully it wouldn't be a waste. I hope I learned some things in the course of you know eight and a half like, years before landing. You could be disappointed by things. You, if it didn't yeah, I mean, you have to expect. <laughs> failure in a lot of these cases. Yeah. Uh, oh, really? Well, with Mars, we have like a two-thirds success rate before Curiosity. Uh, so that means, you know, a third of the time, they don't land Yeah, but now you safely. have uh, three quarters of the time. <laughs> That's so good. <laughs> Nailed Bumping it. Bumping it up. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> what are some of the things that have been the highlights of the past year? I think a few things. I think one of the biggest ones, obviously, was within months of landing, we did our first drill on Mars. And there was the, you know, evidence that this was a habitable environment in the past. I mean, just the, the idea that life could have survived on another planet, not just Earth, uh, that, that still blows my mind. I mean, two planets in the same solar system, and now we know there's more planets all around the universe. So, I mean, I think the odds, that means the odds of life are pretty good out there. That's incredible. Vsauce 2. I'm going to just call you Vsauce 2 instead of Kevin. Uh, <laughs> I'm going to sign you a name, and you're going to like it. <laughs> you, you I talk am Vsauce 2, <laughs> no longer You Kevin. talk about science a lot uh, sure. with, with your audience. Um, what do you think people, why were they so fascinated by all this? What do you think drew the entire world together for, for this moment and over the past year? I think it's a combination of things. First of all, people like robots, so I mean <laughs> that helps. So first, you have robots. Pacific Rim should have done better. Than that. <laughs> uh, I know. <laughs> Maybe not CGI robots. <laughs> if they actually built real mechs, I think they'd be behind it. But I'm on board. Uh, and then outer space. So you combine robots, outer space. I think uh, you're missing no one brainer. thing: the incredible Rube Goldberg machine that was that landing. Right. The tens of things that kind of like parlayed themselves into finally actually a rover on the. On the ground. And he knows even about that. We just know <laughs> Mars, big rock, robot yeah. thing, cool. Like that's a, I know, that's a robot that takes selfies of itself. Yeah. Come on. It's saying itself happy birthday. There's it a did. video of it singing itself happy an, birthday. We have an instrument that can like kind of like vibrate its little uh, inlet cover or a piezo, and then it's kind of like hums itself happy birthday. Throw a cat on that, you got an internet sensation. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be amazing. You gotta throw a cat in space. I, I know. Be terrible for the cat. Why would I get <laughs> Peta, do not write us anything. Uh, like us too. <laughs> what, what are some of the big questions we're still hoping uh, that Curiosity will answer? Well, I think we want to get that history of Mars right now. We're looking at going towards Mount Sharp, and we can see the layers in these pictures. Absolutely gorgeous, kind of like Grand Canyon like stratification. Um, so the idea is that we'll go up there and we'll kind of work our way up these layers and each one of those layers will give us a little bit of the story of Mars uh, past. And, and what's amazing about Mars is actually it's a better like preservation of the early solar system than Earth is because life has kind of mucked everything up here on Earth. Tell me about it. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, when, Kevin,
Kevin, would you take this, um, supposedly there are going to be these uh, trips, that it's a one-way trip to Mars. Already thousands of people have signed up, right? Would you do this? Would any of you do this? There, some of the Vsauce fans have actually proposed that they that we go, but <laughs> <laughs> uh, maybe they're not fans. Is that maybe new, they're like haters. die in a fire. It's like go to Mars and never come back. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, basically. You know you'll be on the cover of Time magazine or something at least, leaving a legacy. Yeah, but you'll never get your hands on a hard copy. <laughs> <laughs> hard no, copy. I, I read that the rover has already gotten more radiation being on the surface of Mars than astronauts are supposed to get in their whole lifetime. So like, how would someone being on the surface of Mars survive for more than a year with the radiation? Well, I recommend Mary Roach's book. Packing for Mars. So <laughs> it, is an Iceland, it is an Iceland book. What kind it is, of it Amazon cut are you getting? <laughs> oh, please use the Nerdist link. There you go. <laughs> Follow your Amazon Nerdist link. Thank you very much. How is also, stamps.com slash WTF. <laughs> How is that possible, Bobby? I mean, the main thing for the astronauts is they will need uh, shelters that essentially provide them, uh, you know, sh shelter from the radiation. And so they'll, they'll be built out of, you know, metallic structures, aluminum, lead, things like that that are thick enough to to kind of resist the radiation. But what the I idea is they would only spend a limited time of, you know, But they, it's a one-way trip, they said. That's right. So they'll, li they'll live the rest of their days there. Would I have They're to disguise, do I have to disguise myself as a fat lady to get into Mars? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Two weeks. I'm halfway there. <laughs> Hairspray, Mars edition. <laughs> well, they talked about having a reality show. Like, the contestants would go and we would watch them go to Mars, but then would we just watch them die? The this is the end of the world as well, we know it. That like reality Big show. Brother Mars edition, right? Right, I mean, but then the they idea. just... Sorry, Time Warner. <laughs> 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 we don't have CBS anymore, everybody. Come You've on. been voted off get out of the tin shelter like, oh. so we can watch you die. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I, that, it definitely has a, a chance to turn to the dramatic, right? Like if, you know, the first rations kind of start running out or something and you start watching this reality You have this show. creepy, it's awesome smile on your face about it, though. You're like, rations run a little low. That, we screw some stuff up, we see what happens. Yeah, it's just <laughs> fascinating. But I know you're saying there's a possibility of life on Mars. You uh, discovered Yellow, Yellowknife Bay, right. which um, indicated there was possible life. There's water on Mars, but it, does that mean there's possible life? I mean, well, what kind of life form? Is it aliens? Like, what? What it means is, at, at least at Yellowknife Bay. If it's not on yeah. Earth, <laughs> it's immediately an alien. <laughs> you know, there are theories that, of course, life could have originated on Mars and then been transported to Earth. Well, I saw that episode of Star Trek where it all came <laughs> together. <laughs> yeah. Never mind, forget it. <laughs> No, I, what, what it means at Yellowknife Bay is at least at that location that it, you know it could have supported life had life been introduced there. But we're not looking for life with curiosity. That's going to be the, the successor to twenty uh, twenty twenty mission. Okay. So the twenty twenty mission will actually start carrying the instruments to look for life. What's the name of that one? Do we have one yet? We don't have one. Some twelve year old child will name it. <laughs> <laughs> Work on my reverse uh -oh, aging machine. skills. <laughs> Can Axe Cop be the name of the, <laughs> of the new rover? We can crowdsource the name yeah. of the next Mars rover. 4chan will ruin, it will be Hitler did nothing wrong, will be sent to Mars. Oh my goodness. <laughs> that will be. Is it, po <laughs> is it possible someone's that? that? Wait, that's, that's actually a 4chan thing. I didn't come up with that. I'm Do not give them ideas, Meg. <laughs> Sorry, it already happened. Mountain Dew learned a lesson. Go ahead. But is it possible? I mean, could someone hack into the system? Is, this, is that possible? It would be extremely difficult. I mean, you, what you really need is the resource, and the, the resources of the Deep Space Network. That's the only way we really have to, <laughs> to communicate with mysterious. the rover. It does. It's uh, no. It's a, it's a set of antennas and uh, and um, you know control stations that we have that uh, that NASA can, you know basically owns, and those are managed by JPL. And we basically communicate to anything that's not in Earth orbit. We talk to it with the Deep Space Network at this point. That's Sixty some odd missions, yeah. NASA owns them. We all own them. Hack it, guys. <laughs> <laughs> did you guys? Did you guys celebrate today? Was it a celebration the past twenty-four hours? Well, yesterday we had a little uh, celebration on the mall where there was ice cream and they gave out you know Hot Wheel rovers. Unfortunately, nice. those of us who were actually working on the project couldn't get to go to that. So, yeah, I didn't get my Hot Wheels. What? Did you all look? <laughs> did you all look out the window like angrily, Just like freeloaders? Longingly, like. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Well, Alarms are going off in the rover. You're yeah. still staring at the window. Ice cream. <laughs> Kevin, I know you asked some of your viewers uh, who are interested to know some stuff from Bobic. I did. This oh, is new okay. media, so, you know, we're tweeting. Oh, yeah, I know you're tweeting live, so get those questions ready. I'm also in the chat room actually uh, taking I'm questions. So nervous now. What so you, yeah, Spencer Cameron would like to know, what's going to happen when it breaks? Send another? Make something to go fix it? What are your ideas? Uh, so Curiosity is pretty robust. We actually have two sets of almost everything on board, except for things like the arm and the, the wheels and uh, instruments. 
So if one side dies, like the computer dies or whatever, we can actually swap sides. And it's the same thing with heaters and, and switches and things like that. So hopefully it won't happen for a long time. Um, our warranty is for two years. So you get back to us in you know, another year or so, and we'll, uh, we'll let you know how we did. <laughs> I like that you have a warranty, like someone in a department's going through papers <laughs> being like, excuse me, oh, I have to have, we already sent the thing. I don't have Take the serial to, number. To <laughs> best. Do we still have to call Apple Care for that? <laughs> <laughs> yes. I already reinstalled <laughs> iTunes. I don't understand why the rover's broken. You try turning it off and on. <laughs> no. <laughs> Besides now discovering this water, like what are the big things that you're hoping for the next year? I mean, honestly, that was kind of the, the big reason to go. So, uh, you know, that, that, that's out of the way in some sense. But I think the big thing is get to this, this Mount Sharp location and then start going through the timeline of Mars history to see if that story, how that story evolves. You know, was it, was it much wetter? How, how wet was it at different times in Mars history? When did, you know, when did the water sort of disappear on Mars? And some of, some of those questions will hopefully we can answer by by looking at that preserved history. Does Curiosity have any nip nicknames, or do you guys have any inside jokes? We had a few. Uh, like the Sky Crane Landing, we called Hope on a Rope for a while. Um, and her twin sister on Earth was called Maggie, which I still have yet to figure out why we call her Maggie. We have a copy of the Curiosity rover that we can test things on Earth. We drive it around. You know, we practice. So, so hopefully She's you don't Maggie. drink and drive, mm -hmm. right? No. <laughs> there's some, there's really some guy at JPO who's like, I'm going to name that rover after you, baby. <laughs> we have a, oh, thanks. What are you doing day to day now that it is on Mars? Do Not much. I, he's here. <laughs> <laughs> I worked before coming here, sir. So. Um, no, I mean, there's, there's two parts. We, we assess the downlink from the rover daily to make sure everything that we planned went smoothly. For yeah. when, especially after we do a drive, we want to see where we kind of ended up at the end of the drive. And then uh, the next part is to plan the following day's activities. So we're very much a mission of discovery. So if we see something interesting, we're going to take, you know, stop and smell the roses, so to speak.